What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Shit. Okay. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, working on a 2007 Dodge Cummins with a 5.9 common rail. Uh, we got a bit of a problem on our hands. Misfire on cylinder one and it's not an injector. So I uh, quickly dug down, did a compression test, leak down test and found out that something's going on in the bottom end. So uh, because I know we're likely going to be rebuilding this motor, uh, whether it's a cracked piston ring or a hole in the piston itself, we're going to go ahead and yank this engine. So I'm going to show you guys uh, step by step along the way on how I go about ripping this motor out. So uh, in, that, in this video you can expect to see basically start to finish how to go about doing that. And uh, I'm also going to be showing you maybe briefly on how to set it up on the engine stand and, and cherry picker and all that. Uh, this this motor is pretty heavy. It's roughly 1,000, 1,100 pounds. So you're going to need something pretty strong, perhaps a two ton uh, engine crane along with a strong enough uh, engine stand as well. So a couple things you might need up front, obviously, but it's, it's, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward to yank this engine. We're going to get to it right now. First thing I'm going to do for myself here is just remove the hood. Uh, not like we're going to have clearance issues going up, but just simply because in my shop here, uh, you know, the brighter the environment, the better. Uh, as well, I've already gone ahead and taken off the valve cover and uh, there's my uh, testing adapter for checking compression cylinder one there. Lucky it was actually only cylinder one, so it was easy access, but I was getting a lot of blow by. So this is very common on these engines. Uh, it went from blow by to minor miss to heavy miss. So might have cost myself a bit of extra bucks, but whatever. It is what it is. We're going to go ahead and bring this puppy back to life eventually. Just right now, got to get it out first. I do also recommend cleaning your work area, having a nice, uh, you know, place to put all your parts labeled clean, some shelving. I'm going to set up a table right there somewhere to, uh, to set up all my, all my, uh, parts that I remove out of the valve train and, and so on, push rods, rockers, tappets, whatever. It's all gonna be nicely organized. So get yourself a space to put all your parts and uh, I'm gonna rip off this hood. Okay, next up here is basically we're gonna go from the front and move our way back, uh, as in condenser, inner cooler, uh, tranny cooler, power steering cooler, rad, we're, we're gonna go all the way back. Uh, and I will show you why we're gonna do that um, in a bit. This is this is my method. I feel like it works well, so I'm gonna share it with you guys. Uh, after we get a couple of items out of the way, basically we're looking to get access to that bolt right there that holds the bumper on. It comes off really easy. If you got fog lights, uh, now would be the time to unclip them. You don't have to unbolt them, you just need to unclip them. Also, if you'd like, you can go ahead and remove your inner fender, uh, both are both inner fenders at this time, and make some more room for yourself to work. Eventually, cross member is gonna come off as well, and, and everything along the way, but I will show you guys that in a little bit. If you guys want, I'm not sure in any specific order really, you can go ahead and take off your, uh, your air box and your snorkel, and uh, also disconnect your batteries. I'm gonna put this truck in neutral right now so it, it rolls um, because we'll need that for our uh, torque converter bolts and uh, when we get to our bell housing under there as well, I'm gonna have to lift the truck so I'm gonna roll it a little bit forward. So do that now. Okay, so our condenser's off, our intercooler's off. I took the air box and snorkel off. Turbo's looking a little rough actually, but we'll see how rough it really is when I get it on the on the bench. But, um, you know, you could do a couple things next if you want, but I'm gonna get the bumper out of the way. The bumper's done with this, those two nuts right there. There's one and there's one right underneath it. The head of these bolts are, are plated together. So it's take off the nuts, tap them over on this side, nuts, tap them over on this side, and the bumpers should just come straight off. So I'm gonna take that off. Now I'll probably start working on the uh, transmission cooler and my power steering cooler. Transmission cooler is pretty straightforward. You got two bolts and then our tranny lines which are under there. 
which should come out because I recently did my transmission lines. Uh, power steering, one bolt, two bolts, and you could just swing that out of the way uh, once the bumper's off. You could leave the lines connected so you don't have to lose any power steering fluid. All right, so the bumper's off. That ugly bumper is going to the paint shop right away. But as of right now, uh, I'm actually just not gonna mess with that power steering cooler. I'm gonna go for the four nuts on the, uh, on the fan shroud and then pop the fan off. There's a connector at the bottom, don't forget that one. Uh, but I'm gonna get that out of the way so I can pop the rat off and uh, I'll, I'll do that after I do that. Uh, <clears throat> so it'll be fan shroud, fan, power steering cooler and then uh, pop the rad, but in the meantime, also don't forget your thermostat housing. Uh, I'm gonna just take that off with the rad, paint that as well, just freshen everything up kinda as we go, and our lower rad hose as well, let's not forget that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a bit of a big step here, so um, that's what my plan of attack is. And then I'll be taking off the front upper cross member there. And then we have the fun part, this guy here. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of detail on how I do that, stay tuned. Okay, everybody, we are moving and grooving. Uh, I wanna take a second here and just give you an update on what is happening. So, um, I don't know where I left off, but there was a rat in there, there was a cross member in there, there was a fan clutch in there. Uh, there was some intercooler piping still in here, I believe. Uh, there was some battery crossover cables. Anyway, fan clutch is a regular thread. Just a regular, like, your regular nut and bolt, right hand thread, okay? Uh, if you need to, put a little bit of heat. Sometimes these guys put some Loctite on it from the factory. I doubt it's factory, given the mileage that I have, but anyways. Regular right-hand thread, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Um, I wanted to show you guys this part here. So this part here, oh, look at that, the Notorious Cross member. Just wanted to say, uh, shout out to Chrysler for, uh, for not thinking this through, but anyways. Um, so <clears throat> two bolts, one, two, the same under here, three, four, same on this side, okay? You can't go one way enough for it to come out. Uh, I don't know what the, the the literal proper way, I don't think there is a proper, proper way, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna slide it over so I got one bolt open here. I'm gonna slide it all the way over that way, as much as I can, okay? As much as I can slide it over one way, I'm gonna do that. And then, what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna take my Sawzall, I'm just gonna buzz it right here. And uh, yep, yeah, I'll lose that other bolt hole. But honestly, all it is is just a hole with some threads, okay? Now it does hold the brackets that hold the rad, no problem. What I plan on doing after, since this thing is, is, is still gonna be solid, but I mean, it's quite flimsy, so if, if you put your hand on it, you'll see what I mean, like the, the, the metal is very thin here, so I'm not really too concerned about its structural ability after I cut this. I'm still gonna have all but two bolts in it, and then what I'm gonna do for, for this end over here, so it's not completely, uh, you know, open like that because the, the rad bracket bolts here. I'm just going to put a through bolt, nut and bolt, done. Bob's your uncle, Jimmy's your uncle. Have a nice day. Voila. She's out. That's the only part I had to cut off of it. You can see there's, look at the colored portion versus the uh, un, uh, painted versus unpainted. I only lost a little bit. And you know what? I'm just going to use that because the threads are still there, it's still good, it'll be strong, and I'll send it in. Um, you might have to pull outwards a little bit and then slide it this way. You might just pull outwards to get clear past the uh, the female end of the tube there and just pull it out. Um, so now that that's out of the way, guys, we can um, we can do, we can make love with our Cummins. Look how close we are. Um, <clears throat> we have lots of room for lots of activities. Uh, basically, my plan of attack here is going to be take off everything off the front of this motor uh, other than the um, the cover for the timing gears and all that but you know tensioner compressor alternator water pump uh, yeah whatever crank uh, harmonic balancer everything 
everything's gonna come off the front of this thing. It's nicely fixed right now, and if I can take some weight off this thing to uh, to help my engine stand, I will. Without going too far ahead here, uh, basically everything's off the front of this motor now, minus this. I need to figure out a puller. Um, it's not coming off. Um, heater hoses are off. And the nut to my V-band clamp is off, but the clamp isn't coming right now. So I soaked it, I'm gonna let it sit overnight. Uh, this side, everything's pretty much off, minus my starter wire, power, source, comes up here. And uh, da, 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 my two fuel lines, which I'm gonna try to get to both of those from underneath. Harness, that's all it is. This is, I believe, your transmission goes into the back onto the top of the bell housing there. I will confirm that in a second, but yes, I believe that is just the transmission. And all this other spaghetti here, I'm gonna get a much better look and access to it once I get it out. I'm gonna keep the fuel rail on, and obviously the CP3 is gonna remain, until I mean, until I, I get it on the stand. Um, and get a better look at everything, plus it's just easier access, no point in fighting. So now I have it set up on the hoist, I'm gonna go up in the air and we're gonna look for uh, torque converter bolts and begin on the bell housing stuff. Okay guys, so it's a new day here for me and uh, I just wanted to walk away from it the other day because the motor was just about ready to come out and it was getting late so I, uh, I don't wanna get started and then get hung up somewhere and then, you know, stay up late to finish it. So <clears throat> new day here for me, everything's ready to go. Uh, turbo downpipe. Is disconnected all of our accessories are disconnected two fuel lines go into the filter or housing there or one goes up to the back but one goes to the filter housing that is uh, is off tranny lines are out of the way uh, there's a couple of ground straps on the bottom of the motor one there one around there it's an 18 millimeter head take those off uh, I think I'm gonna try to leave the starter motor on the uh, setup. I don't know if it's bolted to the transmission or bolted to the motor, but it looks like it's bolted to the motor. So I took off the uh, the power feed to the starter motor, and one goes to the fuse box right there. Uh, everything else is good to go. I got all my bell housing bolts off, minus the two on the bottom, and uh, I think I'm gonna need to remove my cab bolts and lift the cab maybe a few inches just to clear this. Now right now I don't have my valve cover on, so I just put the towel here so I don't get all this rusty chain crap in it. But I loop my chain around one to the other. And don't don't bolt it to the bracket. Obviously you just loop your chain and have it so the chain, the, the, the load is on the chain, not the bolt. This motor is very heavy, so just keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, guys, we are ready to bring this thing out. So. I am going to put the phone down and see what I can do. Okay, as you can see, the motor is out of the truck. I did have to lift up the cab, maybe about that much, not a whole lot. I just used the hoist to pick it up on the pinch weld. Uh, reason behind that is height clearance between the cylinder head and the firewall, or the top of the firewall underneath the cowling. But Anyways, it was uh, not a very difficult one to do. My biggest problem I had was the head of the bolts were stuck here. It's an older truck, high mileage. So as you can see, I had to turn the head of the bolt into liquid. And the head of the bolt was running up into this flange, which is because uh, the bolt was seized in the sleeve of the engine mount. Tranny was good. Tranny's on a jack stand right now, or on a floor jack right now. And it's pretty straightforward, guys. Uh, motor's out. It's really heavy. It helps out the second guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, guys. I just want to wrap up this video showing you guys how I put this on the stand. I know it looks like a lot, but I just want to be sure that this motor doesn't fall off the stand. The uh, stand is rated for a thousand pounds. The motor, as you know, weighs close to 1200 pounds. I didn't want to take that chance. So I built some reinforcements to support the, uh, the stand itself. Don't mind those extra 
spacers. It's the long or the shortest long bolts I could find to fit. I put that under there just to support some sag, and I hang the cherry picker off of one of these bolts again. It's not it's not doing much. Uh, these bolts are not doing much. It hangs off the front just a little bit of reassurance. So it's not uh, it's not stressing out that stand. So at this point, I'm going to wrap up the video. I'm going to proceed to taking apart the engine and seeing exactly what failed, and then we're going to rebuild it. So. Guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. And uh, don't be scared to tackle it on your own. All right, remember, full throttle or no throttle.